أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسول أولي الأمر منكم that أنا عبدك العجيس ودعيف ومسكين وظالم وجهل and by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence we took a path in which to be nothing and alhamdulillah that Allah will inspire within our hearts this way of tafakkur and contemplation in which to annihilate the self and to connect one's heart, to nourish that light within the heart and to bring out its realities. More than ever now to connect with a Divine broadcast that broadcasting and broadcast through the reality of the heart and the heart to be fine-tuned to pick up that frequency and to begin to transmit coordinates, coordinates that make one to be more calm and more contained. As soon as light enters into the heart, take away the anxiety and depression and all of the confusion that now broadcasting and the real pandemic is a pandemic of fear and fear is the opposite of faith. So that's what's occurring on this earth right now is that the opposite of the world of iman is the fear and that when people have fear they become angry and the unknown begin to make people to be angry and violent and every type of bad characteristic begins to come. That's why when the levels of the heart and the understanding of the opening of the heart is, is a knowledge. First levels is to seek a path of knowledge, that's why the lataif of yellow was to seek a knowledge and the opposite of knowledge is a state of ignorance. And anger if in the heart darkens and blackens the heart it's the opposite of faith. So these are the bi the polar opposite, bipolar, <laughs> right? In one state it's angry and the next state it has to have faith. Shaitan keep moving the needle towards the anger so that to leave the ocean of faith. And how he makes people to be angry by keeping them to be ignorant. Islam comes, the Kingdom of Allah comes to dispel every darkness, قُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقِّ that when the haqq and the truth begins to come then it hits every type of falsehood and that's why you see the tumbling of the earth. That when Allah's haqq comes everything will perish but the truth. And Allah again bringing the haqq into this dunya that the haqq of the, uh, the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad crushed everything. Then Allah allowed a state of jahiliyyah and ignorance to overtake the earth. And now Allah again beginning this light of truth must re back enter into this earth, must re-enter into this earth. And by the nature of truth it comes and shatters every type of falsehood. And then we see everything begin to crumble. We pray that Allah inspire within our hearts this way of reality and this way of understanding in which to submit and taslim, to take a path in which to submit and that submission to open Allah's rida and satisfaction. When these awliyaullah begin to give guidance it has a barakah and a dressing within it. It's nothing that your mind can put in understanding to. For if they tell you to drink this cup and walk through this forest and you see every type of shooting in that forest, he says, drink from this cup, we're going to recite something onto it. If you're a person of your mind and eyes and ears, say, oh, hey people are crazy, you got this water from Costco, what are you going to recite on it? I'm running, you're crazy, so let them run. This what coming upon this earth requires a tremendous amount of faith and spirituality. And Allah going to test the ihtibar, 
if we're not getting it for the thousandth time, Allah going to test. And they say, put a drop of lemon, put a drop of lemon. They say, what's the purpose of lemon? He says, not your business, just listen. And they say, take out the lemon, take out the lemon. This is how they train you. Not that you throw three other things into it by yourself because then now you're putting your ego into something and this is not the training with them. The training with them is to get you to a state in which, Samina Watana, I hurt and I've completed. That has its barakah and tabarak and blessings from Allah because Allah is the one who sends the payday. The shaykh is merely there just to keep testing you, testing you. Are you able to overcome your desire to follow your will when the highest level is to submit your will back to Allah and that becomes the struggle with my will and His will, the shaykh's will, the teacher's will. When you're able to overcome that, you're really entering into the oceans of Allah's taslim and submission. As long as everything is in accordance with sharia. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq said, if I leave sharia, if I leave the way of Allah Muhammad Rasulullah that what you do is unacceptable in Islam, you run from me. So this is not do you follow somebody in a corrupted uh, actions that they do. We're talking about people whom their actions and their deeds are correct. And when they give you guidance in that, don't chew it in your ears. Take their guidance into your heart, complete it. As soon as that guidance comes into the heart and moves up through the esophagus and into the head, you're already dead because your head is there with shaitan chewing and eating and counter thinking and debating and everything now will be lost in the person's head. We pray that Allah open, it's not easy, it's easier to speak it than to do it but anybody who's accompanied a shaykh understands how much they're in difficulty and they don't show it upon their face and they don't show it upon their deeds and their actions. But people who know them know, they have been tested, they have been tried, they have been crushed and everything and they keep the coordinates and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad to reach towards their destination. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Is it too late for those who haven't reached that level of connection, building required through these difficult times now? No, Allah's reason for difficulty is to bring people because it's not really that difficult. This is just the beginning. So Allah shaking up the earth and taking away all these distractions. We see everything crumbling, we see that whatever people were running after thinking everything would be abundant, everything would be great, they're running for toilet paper. So then make everybody think, what the heck was I running for? And those whom Allah guides, they have been guided. Whom Allah has not guided, all my talking in the world and anyone else talking is for their entertainment purposes. If Allah's guiding, then the person will begin to see the sharat and the signs that, oh my God everything's collapsing, maybe it's time that I should really make that connection. Any type of spiritual connection has a spiritual umbrella. As soon as you make the madad and the understanding of the madad is that, I, La ilaha anta subhanika inni kuntum min al-zalimeen. I admitted to myself, Ya Rabbi you're the supreme and I am an oppressor. If and I'm an oppressor I have no ability to protect myself, I have no ability to protect my children and that's why Prophet wanted you to be married. Because when you're single and by yourself you probably don't care for other people because you're worried about yourself. You think, oh, I grab my backpack and I go, poor people who have children. Their only thought is that if something harm comes to me, okay I'm going to go but what about my children, who's going to take care of them, who's going to feed them, who's, who's going to keep the oppressors away from my wife and kids. If you don't feel like that, something already wrong with you. And if you do feel like that, then that was the motivating factor, Ya Rabbi I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do any of this. Then they began to cry at night and meditate at night. And that's why the shaykhs then taught him that why you're not going into the presence of Sultanul Nasira, 
why aren't you able to reach to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and say, I'm begging you, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, my, my head and my, my eyes upon your feet that grant me your satisfaction and sign for me Sultana and Nasira that I'm reaching to your satisfaction. And with everything in their life they motivated, them, motivated themselves for that. that. What they're teaching is not a hodgepodge of, you know, just making a soup and throw everything in the pot. Everything they were teaching, breathing, practices, zikr, everything so that when you understood, you begged at the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that everything is, is collapsing, difficulty everywhere, oppression is everywhere and yet I'm not able to reach to you in which my heart feels satisfied. Grant me from the authorized King of Allah the Sultan that if you sign for me that your rida and satisfied with me, your support is upon me and they didn't stop. And that's why then they, they do mawli, they do zikrs, they give, they contribute, they're of service, they're doing everything because they know and they ask, Prophet said, look upon me, what do I want to look upon you for? You're not doing anything. Eat and make yourself fat and do nothing for the way. And Mawlana Shaykh gave now so bad. The real death is not this plague. The real death is when Allah gave a life and He did absolutely nothing with it. He came on this earth, He made it a little bit dirtier, a little bit angrier and He left and you're already a dead walking dead. That's why all the teaching, you're just walking backbiting, you're walking flesh eater on this earth. The real life was the one who woke up and understood, I have a purpose. Tahzim and Nabi My purpose was to glorify the magnificent status of Allah's most beloved servant. With my life, with my wealth, with my possessions, with my time, with my breath, with my family. And teach my family that is what I lived on this for, earth for. If you don't inherit it, you lost my way. From whatever I give to you in life, whatever I taught to you in life. Our life was about tahzim and nabi If you really think like that then you, <laughs> your whole life is to be of service and, and do everything you can. So why is that when next time we're, we're kissing the holy feet of Prophet you have something in your account, you're not coming you know, nothing. So I'm, I, I came, I'm doing everything I possibly can, give me more, give me good health. Don't let me to become sick now when I can do so much more. Give me wealth and I can spend in your way. Give me time and I'll put in your way. Give me an ability, an ability and I'll put that ability in your way. Just give me something to be of service to you and they turn their whole life focus around. And that's what a real shaykh does. Make our focus and everything about them is tahzim and nabi are you doing that now? Are you following a shaykh in which he made your whole life to be about Sayyidina Muhammad That your money spent in that direction, your time is spent in that direction, the knowledges that you read or not political books, not books about himself but about the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad then alhamdulillah you are guided. Then tafakkur and meditation. Is that door we're going and begging Prophet and please I see it more, we said it before in, in many calamities, put yourself in the calamity that they're abusing and what if they come to my door to abuse? Ya Sayyidi Rasul Kareem will you answer, will you answer? And then they cry every night begging Prophet and then they're inspired by Allah Do something at least so you have a hisab. don't you feel shy you've done nothing? And that's why the, these rijal, they have a himmah, they spend everything of what Allah gave to them to do da'wah, to go, come, do things. They even sacrifice from trying to get more from dunya and they come to be of service and they're only concerned why no one else serves because Allah didn't grant them guidance. <laughs> if everybody served then the sky would be daylight but the, the sky is dark and only a few stars shine. And that's what Allah wants, you're a shining star in an ocean of darkness. Nobody wants to serve. If you're the only one serving, congratulations for you. 
If you're the only one cleaning, brooming and trying to do something good, congratulations for you, you got all of the reward. When many should have been doing, nobody. So in the last days few will represent many. They become Fulukul Mashroom. What Allah will give to their soul of power, of might, of blessings and knowledges and realities. Alhamdulillah. Sayyidi, <coughs> during meditation how do we come out from comfort of being accompanied with our ego, self, waswas, despite busying with sounds of zikr and salawat? In the meditation? Yeah, they're still, the ego is not leaving. In the meditation? Yeah. They're enjoying it? During the <laughs> <laughs> during meditation, how do we come out from comfort of well, being come, a come here <laughs> and we hit you. You close your eyes. <laughs> no, you don't meditate in, in comfort. It means that when we were younger and didn't have arthritis, now my knees have arthritis. When we were younger, we were always <coughs> meditating on our knees. There was never a time we were not sitting on our knees. And that state of discomfort was Prophet teaching to cut your hawa, cut your comfort and it will lead to cutting your desires and Sayyidina Muhammad would sleep on bamboo until he had marks. And Sahabi were crying out of sadness that we want to give every comfort on, of our wealth to you. Said, no, no I sleep in this situation so I can pray my fajr. If I go too deep I don't want if as a teaching for us. That anytime you put yourself in a discomfort and a dis-ease you're going to bring out the power of your soul. If you sit in a very comfortable position and meditate of course it's going to be a sleeping competition. You go very loud but you go into your knees until it hurts. You take your tea or kufi and make sure that you're alert and then pain becomes a friend of yours. As soon as you have pain it begins to wake, wake, wake you. Until you would have so much pain and your mouth going numb and your, your knees and feet going numb and that kept you awake. And before you sleep drink a lot of water so that your sleep and train yourself that your sleep is never deep. Don't listen to people of television. Your sleep has to be very subtle because between your sleep and your wake is your most powerful state. So when their sleep is, is light, any sound they're alert. Especially in times like now. So when you drink a lot of water, the whole night you're waking up and washing, you become shining. Why? Because you're continuously making wudu. Not that I was like, oh I have to make wudu. No, this was a blessing. Every time you make wudu it's a light upon light. Then you train yourself how to, as soon as you wash you quickly wash, go to the facility, wash, sit down, pray two rakahs salat al wudu and go to bed. So all night long you're praying and washing, praying and washing. So you put a difficulty upon your hawa. So your four enemies have to be attacked. Your nafs, your dunya, your hawa and shaitan. If you attack these four enemies you can unify your soul. Your soul has been quartered by them. That every desire comes to make your, your hawa to go. Every allurement shaitan is sending to distract us with our dunya. Then the nafs, everything that the nafs is whispering to you to split you in a different direction and then shaitan. So if we're not fighting these four enemies to bring the soul to be whole again, inshaAllah. <coughs> um, Sayyidi, if we have difficulty with our daily awrad being regular and the pronunciations, is it okay to follow along with a video? Yeah, if you're a beginner no problem, every intention and every action is based on intention. Allah is not expecting you to be a perfect uh, in Arabic. You can split and just take a few minutes at the beginning of the day to do the beginning part of the awrad. Then when you get to the Allah, 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 Allah 1500 and to the salawats 300, you can split that throughout the day. That you sit for the 25 minutes to do the beginning part of the awrad and recite by looking at the book and reading it seven times, 70 times istighfar, make your du'as, finished. Then you do your Allah 1500 times and you say, I'm going to do it on the bus going to work. And then every day on the bus coming back I'm going to make my 300 salawats and then alhamdulillah. Never leave the awrad for the night time.
because that's the trick shaitan plays with you. You stop doing it in the day, don't do it in the afternoon. Before you know it, it's uh, 12 o'clock and you haven't done it. And then you just sleep on it. If you miss one day, it's as if you've lost your insurance for that day. There's an umbrella of protection. How we started first was the, the concept of the madad is if I haven't the ability to protect myself and my family and I admit it to that, Allah inspire with you the understanding of the madad. Be conscious of God and keep, keep the company of truthful servants. As soon as you keep their company and they train you that, ask for madad. As soon as you ask for a madad, their lights are all around that insan. They are like an umbrella of protection because what Allah gave to them of barakah and blessings, Allah inspires go and be with that servant because they called upon you. And that's why tanzil rahmah, by calling upon these pious souls it brings the rahmah of Allah That becomes like the insurance of energy around me. I keep calling upon them, I keep meditating to connect with them. Then they begin to teach that you don't have any power when you make your tafakkur and contemplation, negate yourself to be nothing, their energy comes, their energy comes with their shaykh, their energy comes with their shaykh, their energy comes with their shaykh, all the way to the presence of Prophet And then imagine the presence of Prophet and what type of energies come with that reality. Then before you know it their field of protection is, is huge for themselves, for their families, for their children, for everyone. And that's what makes these real shaykhs a real shaykh is their field of protection is so immense. And Allah make them to be a guide so that people fit under their umbrella of protection of their soul. Um, <clears throat> Sayyidi, if we're, if we're trying our best to practically follow your guidelines but in terms of khidmat we feel deprived because of our hukukul ibad, how to overcome this deprivation? Which, which one of us? Hukukul ibad, probably like family. Well, no, that's the, that's the, all the khidmat the shaykh is teaching is not to serve him but to serve Prophet So serving your family in a good way, in a happy way if you're the, the female making your husband happy and your children to be lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad is immense. If you're the male in the family the same making your wife happy, making your children happy and because you're the imam guiding them to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the love of awliyaullah. This is the best of service and if Allah give you extra and then you share in whatever time, ability, wealth, whatever Allah has given to you. So there is nobody who cannot be of service. Even if you're in jail and the bottom of the jail and somehow you're hearing this message, pray for people. Be good, pray and give that prayer and the ida of that prayer as a gift to the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad Ahlul Bayt and Nabi, Ashab and Nabi and awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard. Your salah and your good actions are an immense gift. And that's why the key for all our actions when you read our awrads and our zikrs is idah, illa sharaf, illa sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa ashabihi kiram wa lam al shaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyat al aliyah. That is the whole secret. That, Ya Rabbi, if you saw anything of what I did good, give to the honourable and noble soul of Sayyidina Muhammad because our way was what? To gift everything. If we give a gift to them, imagine they take that blessing up into the heavens and then that ni'mat is that we're going to now give you from our blessings. And your whole life is then the raining of their rahmah upon our souls. You didn't want it for yourself, Ya Rabbi, I'm going to do this for my beloved Sayyidina Muhammad dress with that light. And Prophet no doubt takes that gift and dresses it back eternally upon our souls. So everything in our life is a hadiyah, is a gift in the way of Allah Sayyidina Muhammad Anybody panicking? Don't panic. Uh, anybody reading too many formulas of cures and, and uh, uh, sumak and, and all sorts of sweets and desserts? Enjoy, no problem, it's all halal food. Uh, try to follow the advice of awliyaullah. Try to do your salawats, make sure that your hisab is good with Allah good with Prophet If you're 
sinning then you must not be giving. If what you're doing is not cleaning you, give. Give in the way of Allah that zakah is a zaki, is a purification. That what you give purifies and cleanse you, it cleans you of all the badness and bad character. That badness that within somebody that doesn't allow them to pray. That badness within the somebody that make them to be aggressive and angry. Every bad character, it's like an infection within the body. The concept of zakah and why they link zakah to the purity of the soul was to be a service. It takes away the sickness, it takes away all the bad characteristics. So those are the real remedy. Not you know what you're going to put on the kebabs and you know make this kind of tea and make all these things. This is all very nice, it's good appetizing for you but the real painful medicine is giving. Not what you're going to douse your kebab with and have chai with your paneer and the chai is going to be your shifa. No, Allah wants something a little bit more substantial than that. Give until it hurts, be of service, do your prayers, do your salawats, do all of your ibadah and your action. Make sure your account is good with Sultan and Nasira. Ya Rabbi let me to be under the Sultanat of Sayyidina Muhammad under the guidance of your Allah, and let me to reach to the threshold of Sayyidina Muhammad to feel that security and feel my sense of security that I'm reaching. That clarifies everything. If that is your goal and that is your target then all of what we taught will make sense to you. If that's not your goal and it's about entertaining yourself with what you want to have in your seclusion then that's something different. That's just a, a, a description of a menu for eating. This question for you. Mm. Uh, many people ask this one too, yeah. can we make awrad without having bayat? Many people can we make the awrad without having bayat? Yeah, it's like buying a cellular contract without a phone. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, right? You so say, I want to buy a nice phone. But I don't want to have a cellular contract, <laughs> ahlan wa sahlan. What you going to do with that phone? Or I say, no shaykh, I, I don't want a phone, I just want to get a, a cellular contract. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I like these analogies, these are good. <laughs> yes, you can do whatever you like. But why not the bayah? It's in your heart, nobody needs to touch your hands, it's everything wireless now. Put in your heart that you want to be of service, that you accept Sultanul Awliya, Ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani as your shaykh and all the other shaykhs and representatives, that you love them and that you want to be under their guidance and under their nazar. Read your bayat to yourself and it's a matter of fulfilling your contract. If you feel your bayat is with someone else then you should be listening to them. Many people asking for du'as. InshaAllah, we'll work in after the broadcast, we'll go through all of these uh, questions and, and du'as and try to our best to pray for everyone and everybody be safe and uh, try to follow the guidance and teaching. More than ever that's when people are following 500 different directions, asking 500 different people for du'a but this way is based on loyalty. And they monitor, they understand who many and how many people you're asking and they just stand back and watch. You ask the whole world, that's okay but you have to build a relationship with the shaykh. If you have a relationship with that shaykh that you're listening, you're following, you're, you're doing all of the practices, then you're istiqam and firm on that belief. If you don't believe that that person has an ability to reach to you and that their teachings are not of benefit to you, go somewhere else. Until you do and then you're committed with loyalty. That way your, your du'as and your remedy is not going to be a soup where you just add it from everywhere. You follow the guidance, they give you an awrad, you do the awrad. They give you the du'as, you do the du'as. We have put out an app for Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah that has all the du'as of Shaykh Abdullah Faiz Daghestani, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani and Shaykh Muhammad Adil all approved. Read those du'as if you're under the Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah way inshaAllah. We pray that everybody to be safe, be calm, uh, do your practices, watch the live broadcast, watch the, the video playlists when you're sitting at home doing your seclusion. 
take uh, the books to read from the marifa and the way, then inshaAllah you should find a peace and tranquility. Their teachings and this haqiqat al-Muhammadiyah brings a tranquility into the home. As soon as you play the video, all of the jinn and malaika they want to hear those realities. So they all come, their energy brings a peace, a sakinah into the home. As soon as you play the salawats, the zikrs, they come. By them coming they bring all of their energy and their happiness and you find your heart to be at peace. If your house is devoid of spiritual energies, who's going to be there then? Yeah, all the shayateen, they come, they come, they come until you're nervous and, and you're a wreck and you're uh, all under control. Yeah, because there's a party in your house and you just don't know it. <laughs> they're they're sl slapping <laughs> you around, yeah. So try to make the home a maqam, make everything beautific in the way of Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad Some new people are asking also how, how they can be of service. Whatever skill you have, email us at staff at smc dot, uh, at gmail and then uh, they'll get back to you. If you can uh, type, you type. If uh, anything you can be of service, then alhamdulillah, inshaAllah they try to find something to be of service or something locally. We have people in Pakistan who are serving, trying to put food out and anywhere in the world people can find a way to be of service, just coordinate with the office and they'll get back with you inshaAllah on how to do that. Allah bless you and forgive me. And uh, tariqah join and follow and uh, if you don't want to join then alhamdulillah keep following. Don't despair from the mercy of Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Everything points its, its way back to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and love for all awliyaullah inshaAllah and all those whom are striving towards goodness and good character. Bi hurmati Muhammad and Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs> Inshallah tomorrow night again beautiful night Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul with a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world Click the link now to subscribe.